It's a place I can rest when I'm down and distressed and discouraged. And I'm melancholy. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> Once again, we come for our Bible study. And I'm so thankful that you uh, have uh, connected with, with us once again. I'm Terry Atwater, minister of North Shore Church of Christ in Waukegan, Illinois, at 326 Julian Street. Uh, if you need to want information about <coughs> uh, our labor of love here, just call 847-623-9727. Of course, we're on, the, you know, YouTube, the Internet, and our website. You can check us out. We certainly would love to have that. Uh, but in this particular Bible class, we've done classes on various subjects that's going to help those who are love the Bible, the Biblos. The Bible best book in the world. It's a book that tells us from whence we have come, where we, how we are to live now, and where we're going. I thought in this particular class <coughs> we would deal with uh, something that's going on with many, 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 many people in our land, and uh, of course, the Bible has some answers for us. And that is to, to deal with uh, uh, depression and uh, needing to be lifted above where we are. Though we are a blessed nation with much material blessing in terms of food, clothing, shelter, or access to it, <coughs> We still have the richest of the rich and the poorest of the poorest. And even the richest of the rich, the, the top three or four of people in our land, they own more than the bottom 50% of the people in this country. And there's something wrong with that. Those who are at the bottom, in many cases, 50, the 50% 50 of our economic status, uh, feel like they are left out and they are, uh, they are depressed. Let me uh, extrapolate that particular situation and let's go to the Bible and see if we can uh, uh, deal with that. Uh, first of all, <coughs> uh, our topic of discussion would be that Satan, that's the evil that's present in our society. Satan depresses. And not only does Satan depress, the evil, evil is what depresses us, evil depresses us. It lowers us. On the opposite side, the Savior. So you have Satan, and then you have the Savior. The Savior impresses us. Uh, he makes us feel good. And he lifts us. So what choice, what should you choose? Do you choose evil, or do you choose good? Do you choose Satan, or do you choose the Savior? Do you choose to be lost or do you choose to be saved? And when you're depressed, uh, yes, uh, we, 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 you know, we try to go on vacation. Or we try, uh, some people get drunk. Uh, some people uh, get involved in illegal activities. Uh, we try to do various uh, activities to lift ourselves up and usually we make a mess of it and we make it worse. There is one verse <coughs> that we'll, we'll just spring from in the Old Testament. Remember I said the Old Testament is written for our learning. We get concepts of God, but the New Testament is written to how we implement the concepts. The New Testament is a better covenant. It's how we are saved, salvation and redemption. In the book of Psalms, Psalms is a beautiful book, uh, and uh, the house of David is being dedicated. And in Psalms, uh, David, uh, the, the psalmist, writes uh, in verse 1, where he says that, I will extol thee, O Lord. For thou hast lifted me up and hast not made my foes to rejoice over me. That's a beautiful verse, actually, actually. Uh, what, they, what David is saying that the Lord has lifted him and not lowered him. 
and that the Lord has not allowed his enemies or his foes, his enemies, to rejoice over him. You know, we're living in a time now where some people, they, they rejoice when they see somebody being beat down, when they see somebody that has fallen on hard times. They, they kind of laugh. They snicker. And, and, and that's not healthy. That's not healthy in any decent uh, uh, civil society. And certainly it's not helpful. It's not uh, pleasing to the Lord. But the Lord, uh, so David, is as he makes that, that, that plea and that prayer to the Lord, uh, thou has lifted me up. Let's, let's, let's springboard from that. Let's look at that word. Uh, first of all, let's look at that word, depress. <clears throat> uh, let, 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 I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Let me write it up here. Uh, that, that, let's, let's just put it right up here. I'm going to put it right here, depress. Um, and let's see if we take that word and that'll help us to. Now, you get your pencil and paper class. And let's see if we can deal with depress. Now, what, what is it does it mean to, to depress? Psychologically, it, it, uh, it's, when you're depressed, you're psychologically beat down. You're mentally uh, below where you ought to be. Uh, another way to put it, you, it, it, you are dumbed down. You're dumb down. All right, that, that's that that's that 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 could mean that you know you 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 are depressed. Uh, 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 something else that when you're depressed, it will erode any good that you have within you. Just erodes, erode. You know, it's kind of like soil erosion. Uh, your 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 good feelings are eroded when you are depressed uh, another way to look at it is you become what is called a pushover see a lot of people get caught up in illegal activity when they are depressed and, and they're pushed over the edge so to speak you feel like life has pushed you over all right and, and uh, it, it, so that, that's another uh, meaning of being depressed or uh, another way to look at it, it uh, we we rupture we rupture our motivation. In other words, you are no longer motivated. Rupture your motivation. You did, you're just not you're not uh, pushed to step out and take a creative risk. You're pushed in a negative direction. You become pessimistic rather than uh, optimistic. Uh, so a rupture of our motivation. Now you're, you are endangered. You know, when, when you're depressed, you're endangered. You're, you're endangered. You're, you're in a position where, you, you know, you can just get, not only hurt yourself, hurt somebody else or hurt others. Uh, in addition, uh, what when you're when you're depressed? Uh, I guess another word would be is suppress. You know you're s suppressed. Uh, you 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 are sucked into a state that it feel like you can't get out of it. You know, not, not only is your back against your wall, but your head is below water. You know. You're suppressed. And then I guess another way to look at it, too, is you're stepped on. You feel like other people just step on you. Okay. So that's, that's, that's how we look at being when you're depressed. And, that, and that's, we, in the United States, we ought not to be that way. Particularly if you happen to embrace Christianity, uh, you should not be there. No Christian should have a problem. Christians should only have challenges, not a problem. But when you have, when, you, when, when evil takes over you, uh, it, it, let, let, let me correct what I said there. Not necessarily to take over you. When evil touches you, you get, you get just a dab of evil in you. You begin the process of depression. Just a touch of evil. Just a tough touch of evil starts you in that 
dumbed down, eroding, that pushover, that ruptured motivation, that give up mentality. And uh, you, might, you might end up doing something irrational. Okay. Now let's go over to the other side. Let's look, take a look at the Savior. Uh, I, I chose to use the word impress. You know, Jesus will impress you with what he does, you know. So let's just put impress right here, and we'll try to get this in. Okay. Uh, Jesus will impress anybody when you start really absorbing uh, his mannerisms, his behavior, and how he encourages us to uh, embrace his teachings. To impress, he will ignite. See, he's in the business of he will ignite your purpose. See, we all, every human being on the earth has a purpose. We all have a purpose, you know. And, 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 and what, what, what the Lord does, he ignites that purpose that's within us. And many times people say, well, you know, I, you know, I, I, don't, I don't need Jesus. I don't believe in Jesus. Well, he, that's the source of your purpose. He gave you a purpose. He can ignite that purpose. In other words, not only can he ignite the purpose, he is what I call the makeover man. You know, you know ladies use uh, makeup, but Jesus is in the business to make over. See, <laughs> makeup just covers over. It just covers you up. But make over is the Lord works on that foundation within you to make you over. And uh, that counteracts uh, depression and, uh, gets, and that impresses, impresses anyone who connects to Jesus. Uh, uh, something else that he does, he will position us. He, put, he will position us for success. See, a lot of times, see, success is being in the right position right place, right time. He will position you for success. Uh, and, and many times people, and, and let me share this with you. When you don't have Christ with you, you could be right where you could touch success, but you won't, you won't even know it because you don't have that which will trigger to see it. For instance, one person can walk down the street and see trash on the street and walk right by it. I'm not going to touch that. Another person can walk down the street and say, I'm going to pick up that trash. I'm going to be a trash collector and start a business in trash collection and make a fortune. It's all a matter of being pricked from the inside out. So one person's cash is another man's trash. It's all a matter of of whether you are connected to Satan or the Savior, okay? Uh, something else uh, that will help you is that the Savior not only is a makeup, he renews us. Uh, one scripture, the Apostle Paul, who was guided by Christ to write it, says, be not conformed to this world let me say that again. Let me say it slow now, class. You can jot this down. Romans 12 and verse 2. Romans 12, verse 2. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. See, the, see Jesus works. He, he's a mind regulator, a mind uh, renovator. He renovates the mind, and, and, and that's why he is in the lifting business. Uh, not only that, uh, he elevates. He elevates. Let me write that down. Elevates. Okay? He elevates. Uh, he doesn't de-escalate. He escalates. Uh, he elevates. That, 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 that's that lifting capacity. Not only does he lift us up financially and lift us up socially and lift us up uh, psychologically, but he can lift us up to heaven. He said, I go away and I prepare a place for you that where I am, there ye may be also. So the Lord can elevate us. In addition, the Lord in our situation can support us. See, sometimes the Lord will send us a test to see what our faith level is. When we are depressed, 
And then he will support us to slowly bring us out of that uh, depression that we're in. Let me give you a, a passage of verse. I'll just quote this one where it says, Humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, and in due time he will lift you up. Notice what it says now. Humble yourself. Now, see, a lot of times what happens is we got so much pride, we're so hard headed, think we know it all, and I don't want to listen to somebody. No advice. But humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, and in due time, he will lift you up. <clears throat> uh, and then something else about the Lord. Every now and then, the Lord will just surprise us. He will surprise us with victory. You know, all of a sudden, you see the sun shining, and you didn't know it was shining. The Lord will surprise you when you get on his side. So the question is now, I've, I've done something here. Here is the word depress, and here is the word impress. Now, which do you choose? If you choose depress, that's Satan working, satanic intervention into your nature. And actually, this all becomes sin. Sin is a satanic intervention into your nature. Depression really is the result of sin. Whereas impression is the result of salvation. Jesus provides salvation. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. That's what Jesus said. All right? So it, that, that's really impressive from the Savior's uh, standpoint. Now, let's go, let's, let, let's, let's go and let's just spend a little more time over here with, 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 with Satan, the evil side of this thing, uh, uh, to, to help you to really begin to get a grip. <clears throat> now, I said Satan lowers us. Uh, the question is, if Satan lowers, let, let me just divide this, how, you know, how does Satan, how does he, how does he lower us? Okay? L let me, let, see, Satan... It, Satan, he approaches us with the idea that he's going to give us what we want and make us feel good. And what happens is he actually destroys us. Okay? So now, let's, let's talk about how Satan lowers us. First off, number one, Satan just will leave us alone. See, what Satan does is he wakes you up out of your good sleep get you all excited, then he'll leave you alone and let you hang out there. See, Satan disappears. He, he, he appears and then he disappears. He never delivers on his promises. Satan makes all kinds of promises, but he never delivers. It's, it's kind of like uh, some people in the government. You know, they make promises and they don't deliver. We, we got some people right now, they want to cut off our Social Security and all they care and all of those kinds of things. Leave us alone. Uh, also, what Satan does is number two is Satan oppresses us. He oppresses us. He oppresses us, which is a depression uh, aspect of life. Uh, so Satan affects us in so many ways, okay. He oppresses us. Uh, so, something else he does, let me use this black pen here. You might see that a little better. He wrongs us. He just does us wrong, okay. Satan just does us wrong. He wrongs us. Uh, you hate for somebody to do you wrong, okay. And when somebody does you wrong, it, 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 it not only makes you angry, it might make you mad, but also it depresses us. And that's, that's, that's evil. That's evil working in, in and around us. Uh, something else that Satan does is he discourages. He starts out by encouraging, but yet he ends up discouraging us. You remember back in Genesis, in chapter 2, uh, Satan came along and he encouraged Eve to take a look at the tree. 
Now, God said, don't touch my tree. And Satan said, the day you touch that tree, you will not die. God said you would die, and Satan said you would not die. So Satan encouraged her to touch that tree. And then the Bible says that in chapter 3 that she looked at the tree and saw that it was good to the eye, and she went over, and not only did she touch the tree, she grabbed the fruit on the tree and took a big bite of that fruit and gave it to her husband, and they ended up totally discouraged and ruined, okay? And, of course, not only that, Satan, I guess you could put it in another way here. Let's, let's put number five down. He's a rip-off. I'm putting it in today's language. He's a rip-off. He's a rip-off artist, okay? You, you think you got some, you got gold and you got fool's gold. You, you, you think you, you won the lot, lotto, and, and, and you know what? You, 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 <laughs> you find yourself without an auto. <laughs> okay, class. <laughs> when you put your money on the lotto, you end up with no auto. <laughs> Satan, Satan makes you think that you got it going on. He just rips us off. You, you know, uh, in fact, uh, God said something in the book of Malachi in the Old Testament, a concept of God. He says you end up, you know, pockets with holes in them. You know, your money goes in, and then, and when it, but, it, but it doesn't stay. You wonder where it goes, and, and, and it's just like having pockets with holes in them. And, of course, uh, the, the, the sixth thing that Satan does, and let me write that down here, is he, he sells fool's gold. That's what Satan does. He sells fool's gold. Okay? And, and, and uh, I better spell gold right. That's G-O-L-D, I believe. Okay? G-O-L-D. So Satan sells fool's gold, not real gold. I'll, I'll never forget uh, when I was a kid, about uh, 19 years old, and uh, we were in, I was in college <coughs> Uh, 20 years old in college, and we we were playing San Jose State, and uh, we were out in California, and uh, we had a chance to coach allowed us to go down to Tijuana, Mexico, and uh, for a, for a day we had some time off, and uh, our, a man on the street ran up to me with a bunch of watches on his arm, and they was little pretty watches. He said, "Now you can have one of these for for ten dollars," and uh, I bought one for ten dollars. And do you know, I thought I had the best thing in all the guys. Oh, Atwater, you got that. That's a great watch you got. And, 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 and the next day, the next day, one day later, the watch stopped running, and it started changing colors. Okay, so I thought I had the real watch. You know, it, 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 it's amazing. But I was sold some fool's gold. It looked good, but it, was, it, wasn't, it wasn't really real, okay? All right, so we all get caught up in stuff when you mess around and uh, get into the prison. So these things, so Satan will put you in, he lowers us into depression. All right, now, let's go, let's go on the positive side now. Let's see what we can do by going to the positive side, okay? Let's uh, deal with the Savior. Now, the Savior, since Satan lowers us, Satan lowers us, the Savior lifts us, all right? So, Jesus is in the lifting business. Now, the next question is, is how does he lift? That's the question. That's the big question. Now, we know how Satan lowers us. Now, let's find out how the Savior lifts us, all right? Let's... Uh, Open your Bibles up now for just a moment. And let's go to the Gospel of John in the New Testament. Now, that's Matthew, Mark, the first four books of the Bible, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Go to John chapter 17. That's a, actually a beautiful chapter. And let me tell you why it's beautiful. First of all, John chapter 17 is really the Lord's Prayer. Now, now, now we, the prayer that we always say over there in Matthew 6, the prayer that we always say, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. That's not the Lord's Prayer. 
That's really the Lord teaching his disciples how to pray. It's a teaching prayer. That's not the Lord praying. It's a teaching prayer. Now, the real prayer of the Lord is in John chapter 17. And if, you, if you look at verse 1 of that particular chapter, it says, These words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said. Now, here's Jesus himself praying to his Father. He says, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy son, that thy son also may glorify thee. See, that's the opening. That's the salutation of his prayer. Is he's giving honor to God. Glorify the son. That means make me look good, God, and then I will make you look good. Okay? That's what glorify means, to make look good, to glorify. All right? So that's the Lord's prayer. Now let's go further down in that particular chapter to verse number 23. All right? And the question is, is how does Jesus lift us? As Jesus is praying, one way that he lifts us is he loves us. Now, notice what I said now. I didn't say that he lusts for us, L-U-S-T-S, but he loves us. That's agape love. In other words, he sacrificially will hurt himself to heal us. That's, that's what you call love. When somebody will hurt themselves to heal somebody else. Hurt self to heal somebody what, what is that governor down in Florida doing to, 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 to the migrants that come across the border? He's playing tricks. He's, instead of hurting himself to love the people, he's hurting the people to love himself. So he's got a false love, a reverse love, and really it's lust to make himself look good. All right, but in John chapter 17 and verse 23, let's watch what Jesus does, what he prays for and what he does. He says in verse 23, I in them and thou in me. What is, what is he saying as he's praying to God? He says now, Lord, I am in my disciples and I am in those who are in my church. I am in Christians. I am in them and thou in me. Now watch this here now. God, you're in me and I am in them that they may be made perfect in one. They may be made complete or mature together or in one or unity and that the world may know that thou hast sent me and has loved them as thou has loved me oh lord have my class that's a beautiful verse isn't it see see the connection of love here is god loves jesus and jesus loves us that's love now lust doesn't work that way Lust is I love me and me love love, <laughs> okay? And lust is where I just satisfy me. But love is where I satisfy you. Notice something. It never says that God loved himself, but it says God loved Jesus. Notice something else. It never said that Jesus loved himself, but Jesus loves us. Now, what should we do? We should love one another okay then it's all connected so love is how the Lord starts the lifting process God loves Jesus Jesus loves us and when that love gets down to us we in turn can love Jesus back and Jesus will send our love to God and we are lifted into the spiritual portals of heaven via love, okay? All right, number two, how does he lift us? Well, he inspires us. You know, as I said earlier, that Satan, he, he, he does not even motivate us. You know, he, he ruptures our motivation. However, the Lord inspires us. All right, let's, let's run over to another verse in 1 Peter. First Peter, uh, as you know, Peter learned how to love. 
Peter started off, he was a pretty bad guy. Peter cut off a man's ear and cursed, and he denied the Lord, and he uh, went away from the Lord, and uh, he, he, did, he, was, he was very irresponsible, angry and harsh, a gangbanger. But later on, Peter said, let us grow in, in grace and in knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, okay? So let's go to 1 Peter, 1 Peter, the one, book, one of the books that Peter wrote in 1 Peter, chapter 1 and verse 3. Now, if the Lord inspires us, let's see what Peter had to say. Peter said, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. All right? You know, that, that, that's powerful right there. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy, see, mercy is something that Jesus brings into the world. Jesus said, Blessed are the merciful for they shall obtain mercy. See, we got to learn to be merciful. See, the way the, way the governor in Texas and the governor in Florida and, and some of these people are treating folk and going in and, and to school boards and raising all kind of sand and, you know, banning books and don't want to talk about various cultures and making up stuff, conspiracy theories and uh, wanting to shoot up people and want to have a civil war and so forth, how in the world can they claim themselves to be New Testament Christians, all right? You, you, you know, you're not a New Testament Christian unless you understand mercy, all right? Which according to his abundant mercy, as it said, hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. In other words, when Jesus rose from the dead. That gives us a lively hope, all right? Lively hope. That, that, that inspires us. That's inspiration. Now, let, let me share this with you. If Jesus had not risen from the dead, if he was still in the grave, uh, we, we would not be here. We wouldn't be here. We, we would not be here. It, it would all be over. There, there, there would be no way for us to be lifted. But because he rose, we have a lively hope that when we pass on, we will be resurrected, okay? That's, that, that, that's, that's inspiration, all right? To inspire, let, 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 me, let me go a little further, help you with, with a few words that might help you to understand what it means to inspire. It means to move, okay? See, sometimes, you know, to, to move, you need to be inspired, Okay? When you when you're sitting on your couch to move, you you got to be inspired. It's to move. It's to it's to guide. We all need to be guided. All right, Lord, order. You know, there's there's a passage. Order my steps. We need to be guided. Our steps need to be guided. It means to influence, to influence, to in to 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 in, to, to to move, to guide, to influence by divine or omnipotent inspiration. In other words, omnipotent means all-powerful inspiration from God to move and to guide, uh, uh, to influence. So when the Lord guides us or moves us or influences us, that's inspiration, okay? Now let's get, let's get one other passage, I believe in Titus. Uh, Titus, the book of Titus, chapter 1. Uh, yeah, First Timothy, second, yeah, Titus, right after Second Timothy, Titus, chapter one, and verse two. Titus, chapter one, and verse number two. Let's let let let, let let's read that together. The Bible says, uh, as the apostle Paul is a writer, he's writing to Titus, one of his sons in the gospel minister. He says, in hope of eternal life, which God that cannot lie promised before the world began. So in other words, God does not lie. He gives us hope because he does not lie. And he has a promise that he made before the world began. And that, all of that inspires us. 
Now you tell me something that Satan has inspired us on. Nothing. Satan hadn't inspired us on one thing. All Satan done is just provided tricks, deception, delays, doubt, and distraction. That's all Satan does. Distract, doubt, delay. That's all. And lies. He lies. Okay? Anybody that lies, they got the Satan in them. Okay? Satan is in them. All right. So the Lord inspires us. God inspires his people through prayer and the study of the word. Now, this, this is why. You need to study the Word. See, we're having Bible study right now, class. By studying the Word, that helps to inspire you and move you out of your depression and so that you can be uh, in a state of uh, impression, okay? How else does the Lord uh, lift us? All right, let's go to number three. He frees us. Number three. The Lord frees us. I know some people say, well, look, I'm already free. I'm not in jail. Well, hold it just a minute. Hold it just a minute. Being free does not mean you're not in jail or you're not incarcerated. Being free means you're free in the mind. Do you know most people are in the jail of their mind? When you are in the jail of your mind. No, for instance, if you don't like somebody because of the color of their skin, you're in the jail of your mind. If you don't like somebody because of their size, you're in the jail of your mind. If you don't like somebody because of their education, you're in the jail of your mind. Mind. If you don't like somebody because of what they have achieved, you're in the jail of your mind. All right. Now, if you want to be free, all right, let's see if there is a word in, from the Lord that might help us there. Turn with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 3. 2 Corinthians chapter 3. And I believe it's verse 17. Yeah. Paul, again, the Apostle Paul, everything Paul wrote, Jesus told him to write it. Okay? Paul is an apostle. He's a minister. And he is a New Testament Christian. All right? And he writes in 2 Corinthians chapter 3. Uh, I believe our former president said this was 2 Corinthians. But <laughs> 2 Corinthians, holding the Bible upside down. But uh, no, 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 no. This is 2 Corinthians. Corinthians, that's the, prop, the appropriate, appropriate way. You have 1 Corinthians and you have 2 Corinthians. You don't say 1 Corinthians and 2 Corinthians. No, 1 Corinthians and 2 Corinthians. And please get that all to that former president down there at Mar-a-Lago, that it's 2 Corinthians, chapter 3 and verse 17. Watch what Paul said. Now, that's an adverb of time. Now, the Lord is that spirit. Now, it, it, it has a capital S for spirit. That's the, the, that's the Holy Spirit, okay? Small S is your spirit. Big S is Holy Spirit. Now, the Lord is that spirit, and where the spirit, that's capital S, of the Lord is, there is what? Liberty. Look at there. Look at there. Look at there, class. You want to be free? It says, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom or liberty. All right? Now, spirit of the Lord. How do you find the spirit of the Lord? It's in the word. Jesus said that the words I speak, they are spirit and life. So when you get into the word, you get into the spirit of the Lord, and that's where, the, that, that's where freedom really is. And freedom starts, like I said, in your head, in your mind. When you're free in the mind, then you're free everywhere else. All right, let, let, let's, let's, pick, let's pick one more on this one because everybody wants to be free. But we all, many of us are in the jails of our mind. All right, let's go to the Gospel of John, the Gospel of John. Let's call John to the table, the apostle of love. John to 8. In John chapter 8 and verse number 36. 
Watch Jesus, what he said. Jesus said, if the Son, that's Jesus, therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. Now, I, I love that one. If Jesus makes you free, then you'll be free indeed. Okay? Now, if we go to verse 32, how does Jesus make us free? He says, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. All right? Let, 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 let's, let's do that one more time. Let's do that one more time now. Verse 36 says now, if the Son, that's Jesus, therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. That's how the Lord lifts you, makes you free. Now, how do I, how do I, get, how do I become free? Verse 32, ye shall know the truth, and it shall make you free. So now let's go and ask the next question. Well, what is truth? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man cometh to the Father except by. So Jesus is the truth, and Jesus makes you free. And when you know the truth, you will be free, and you are lifted beyond where you are. So he frees us. That's part of lifting us. All right? Let's go a little further now. Let's go to number four. How else does he lift us? Number four, he will, uh, in number four, he will test us. See, sometimes you need a test or he will try us. And that will tell you whether or not you are free. All right? All right, okay. Let's go back to Peter one more time. In 1 Peter chapter 1, let's go to 1 Peter chapter 1. You know, it's amazing, Peter, to be uh, uh, such a rotten kind of guy, a hard-headed guy, a cursing guy, an uh, ear-chopping-off guy, a denying guy. It's amazing how he changed when he hooked up with Christ and listened to what Christ and obeyed Christ. All right, in 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 4. It says, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled and that fadeth not away reserved in heaven for you. In other words, the Lord provides us uh, with an inheritance that is incorruptible and undefiled that fades not away reserved in heaven for us. So the Lord tests us with that incorruptible inheritance that we will receive if we remain faithful to him. Now notice what it says. When you get a gift from the Lord, it's incorruptible. How many gifts have you received from human beings and they wear out? How many... How, many, how, much, how much clothing have you received and you don't have it anymore? You know, how much money have you received and you've already spent it? What, what, how much food have you been given and you've eaten it or, it, uh, or it's gone, you know? But the Lord gives gifts, that give a gift that is incorruptible. Now, let, let, let's, let, let, let's couple that with, with 1 Peter. Since we're in 1 Peter, go to 1 Peter chapter 5. In 1 Peter chapter 5, the Lord tests us. He shows how this thing works in verse number 10. He said, but, in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 10, write this down, class. But the God of all grace, who hath called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, comma, after that ye have suffered a while. See, sometimes the Lord allows you to suffer a while. That's the test suffer a while. After you've suffered a while, he'll make you perfect or complete. He'll establish you. 
strengthen and settle you. Are you, you, you understand what I'm saying? See, the Lord will test us as he lifts us. See, in other words, the Lord don't want to lift somebody that can't pass a test. Okay. If you can't pass a fundamental basic test of obedience, then the Lord don't want to lift you. The Lord says, children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. If you don't obey your parents, children, young people, if you don't obey your parents, the Lord won't lift you. All right? You got to obey your parents. Well, in the Lord. Now, if your parents are in the Lord, teach you in the Lord, and you don't obey your parents, then you will not be lifted by the Lord. And you might be lifted by other things, but you won't be lifted by the Lord. Okay? Let me give you one more in terms of lifting us. The Lord also, number five, will secure us. You know, it's amazing. We're running around here trying to get security. We're trying to get financial security. We're trying to get security from uh, the criminals. We're trying to get security for our health so we won't get sick. We're trying all kinds of security, all right? Now, we're still there in 1 Peter. We, we just read the, uh, a verse in 1 Peter, and, and now let's go back. We read 1 Peter uh, chapter 1 and verse number uh, uh, 7. <clears throat> Uh, in, in fact, uh, I, I really didn't read verse 7. I read verse 3, and I intended to read verse 7. But let, let, let's go back and pick up at verse uh, 4 again. I'm sorry, I read, I, read verse, I read verse 4 before, and I want to read it again. But let, let's read verse 7 uh, to, uh, on, on the test side. Verse 7 says that the trial of your faith. So that's the test, the trial of your faith. Okay, the Lord will test your faith. Uh, being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. So the Lord will test our faith as he lifts us. And also he will secure our faith in verse number four because he gives us an inheritance that is incorruptible that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven. All right, that's 1 Peter chapter 4. Now, let's couple that with one more passage of Scripture, then we'll close out this lesson for today. Go with me to 2 Corinthians, all right? Again, that's the Apostle Paul in 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and uh, uh, verse 1. Okay, 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 1. Uh, this, is, this is as Paul is, is confident in his ministry. And here's what he says. For we know, I like this, for we know. When you know something, that's, that's, that's healthy, that's good. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved. See, we, we actually live in an earthly house. You know, the body, you don't see Terry Atwater. You see the house that I live in. And this house that I live in is going to dissolve. It's going to go back to the earth from which it came, the dust. For this earthly house, this tabernacle were dissolved as we have a building of God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. All right? So when you deal with Jesus, not only does he lift you, but he secures you. So let's look at Let's look at how the Lord lifts us now, all right? Five, five ways the Lord lifts us. He loves us, all right? He inspires us. He frees us. He will test us, and he will secure us. And that's how the Lord lifts us. Let, let, let me close out. Uh, the Lord does not depress us but he will impress us okay class let's go further the Lord does not depress us but he will caress us <laughs> you like we all like to be caressed don't we now Satan doesn't caress anybody Satan will give you a blanket with holes in it he doesn't caress, he doesn't hug anybody, but the Lord will hug you and caress you and 
lift you up by his mighty hand. All right? The Lord does not depress us, but he will redress us. L let me explain redress to you. You remember back in the, in the Garden of Eden that Adam and Eve, when they had sinned, they covered themselves with leaves. But the Lord turned around and covered them with skin. He, re he redressed them with a blood sacrifice by the death of an angel of an animal. The Lord does not depress us, but the Lord will arrest us from Satan. Do you know the Lord will arrest you? When Satan comes in, the Lord will arrest you from satanic intervention into your life. See, a lot of times we, we're walking dead into trouble, headed for trouble, and the Lord will arrest us. The Lord does not depress us, but he will profess us to God. I love that one. See, the Lord won't depress us, but he will confess us and profess us to the God of heaven. All right, and let me give you another one. The Lord will not depress us, but he will ingest us with the Holy Spirit. So we ingest the Holy Spirit, and it's amazing what will happen. So in these ways, the Lord impresses us and not depress us. So you're depressed? Ah, oh, check this lesson out and go back and check your notes and begin to live the life that the Lord would have you to live and, and come and study with us at North Shore Church of Christ. Now let us have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we're so thankful for the blessings that you have uh, brought our way. We're thankful for the Lord Jesus who lifts his people, who loves them, who inspires them, who frees them, who tests them and secures them. We're thankful for all of these blessings are being lifted out of our depression. We're living in the greatest country in the world and we should never be depressed if Jesus if we put our heads on Jesus' breast. Let the Lord be with us in every way. Forgive us for our sin. Help us to live the life that we ought to live as a nation and love one another. These blessings we ask in the name of Jesus who prays, who lives for us. These blessings we ask in his name. Amen, amen, amen. Yes.